Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you some examples of how to get deep cells with 3-in-1 oil. And this is a good example of one. This one I, I basically poured um, thin and well I poured it thick but it, it ran over the sides and it allowed the oil to kind of penetrate down to my base coat. And if you want to have deep, really deep cells that incorporates all your colors without going all the way through, you need to have it a little thicker. So I'm going to show you a couple examples. Now this one, I let it run over the sides, so it ended up thinner on the top. Now although it turned out nice and I like this one, I'm going to show you two other examples that actually turned out a little better. Let me show you the other ones. Now right here is a really good example of some, some really nice cells. Now, the way I did this is I actually taped off the outside where I had um, a quarter inch of the tape sticking up above so that it allowed the epoxy to stay in on top of the, on top of the art. And what, the, what this allows is, it allows, like if you look in these cells, you can see the whites and the blues and the, you don't really see down through to the, to the primer. And you can see the blues here, this is a really nice one right here. Okay, green. So you're getting a lot more depth out of your cells. And these really look like jellyfish. Um, so this is an example of how to, how to create deep cells. And basically what I've learned is you want your epoxy layer to be a little bit, you know, start off with your different colors. And when you put your oil in, you, you want that, but you don't want a, that epoxy to run off and allow the oil to go down to your base coat because then you just end up with some black centers or whatever color your base coat is. But if you, if you allow it to build up, it, it will create some really neat features. And this is one of the nicer ones that I did. Let me show you another one. Here's another one that really has a lot of depth to it. And um, you can really see the cells like the different colors inside of the cells and that one turned out really nice too. Anyway, let's get started. I'll show you how I'm going to make one and um, yeah. Okay, welcome back. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to show you how to create deeper uh, cells using 3-in-1 oil. Now this particular one, like I said, I, I had this, um, I did this one yesterday and I didn't like how it turned out. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the sanding block and I'm just gonna scuff up this whole surface. That way the, the next layer of epoxy has a good bond. And this is something good to know because if you, I do a lot of these projects and most of them I've liked. This particular one, I tried something different. I tried to do a dirty pour and I really wasn't that experienced at doing a dirty pour. So basically what I had to do was uh, I decided to use this one to demonstrate the depth of how you could get deep cells. And by having these colors in the background and creating, uh, it will create a lot more color in the, in the next layer. You don't have to sand it too much. But you just need to scuff it up a little bit so you get some adhere. I'm going to wipe that down. So you can see the colors that we already have down here on the bottom and that will help with this layering. So today we're going to use, we're going to use some uh, Pacific Blue, we're going to use some Okinawa Green, and we're going to use some uh, Kanaku Yellow. So and the, the other thing we're going to do today too is we're going to use some of this uh, Apple Barrel White. and. I'm also doing something new today. I'm using um, silicone cups. And the reason I'm doing that is I've been throwing away like five, six plastic cups every day. And that just seems like a, not a good way to go for the environment. So, so what I've done, I've, I've got this thing clamped in here and I'm using Tyvek wrapped on these two by fours, or these small one by twos, I guess. And that's going to keep the epoxy from coming out and it'll allow me to get a nice thick layer in there. So anyway, let's get started. We'll start off with uh, 
I think we're going to start off with some Okinawa, or no, this blue, Pacific blue. And we're only going to do eight ounces at a time. So let's get our gloves on. The nice thing about having a kind of having it formed up too is you're not wasting so much epoxy. And whenever I let it run over the sides, I, I lose a lot of epoxy. Okay, I'm going to start out like I usually do with the, the curing the hardener first. And I've got the room temperature right now. You can see I've got my, my pellet stove going in the background. And the room temperature is 71 degrees right now. Perfect temperature for epoxy. Now normally if this was a raw board with no, no color on it, I would uh, I would put a base layer of clear. But since it already has color in the bottom, I'm going to go right for our colors. Right here I'm doing eight, four ounces. This is a one-to-one. -one. I'm using super clear. And we're going to use this blue first. Doesn't take much. Just a little bit. Goes a long way. I really like, I've been really happy with the eye candy pigments. They, um, they really have a, a tra kind of a translucent effect and it, it looks pretty cool. The other thing I do is I level out this the board so that everything kind of flows evenly. This is my first time using these uh, silicone cups. I was curious how they do scraping the edges because they're such a soft, such a soft material. So again, this is a one-to-one -one mixture and the room temperature is 71 and I'm going to mix it for a couple minutes. Every, every art project that I do, I learn a little more. And the reason I wanted to show you about these cells is that's something I learned recently. I did about three or four projects using the 3-in-1 oil. And I noticed when I looked at them, the one that I, the one that was, I poured thick and I taped off the sides, the cells came out a lot better. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Again, always scrape your sides. I'm kind of excited that I can reuse these cups and not waste a bunch of plastic all the time. That should make it a lot nicer for me. Okay, we're just about ready to pour this blue. Open and scrape the sides once more. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the GoPro so you can get a downward look at it. And we'll just go one cup at a time and I'll show you. First up is this Pacific Blue. And I just kind of pour it in like a boomerang. And I crisscross them. Next up, we're going to pour this o Okinawa yellow color, also for my candy. I'll leave a I'll leave a picture of it right here. And we're going to go the opposite direction with this one. Now I always torch them out in between. I try to remember. Now I did make a pretty bad mistake right here. I I, um, I didn't realize that my border that's clamped down right there. At a couple spots that were not that were not holding the epoxy, so I did have a leak. R right here, I'm going to pour a green color, and I crisscross this through both the blue and the yellow, and put a little on the sides. Last up is this uh, white acrylic paint from Apple Apple Barrel, I believe. I'll leave a picture of it right here. So basically what's happening is you're by creating the border, you're able to get the epoxy to, to thicken on top of your art project. And what that does is it keeps it keeps the oil from burning all the way down through your to the bottom. And right here I take my blow dryer and just blend up these colors. The blow dryer is kind of a little bit of a secret weapon that I, I think really transforms and right here I put the three in one oil in. Now I'm gonna speed this up about 20 times and right here I walk away I leave my GoPro going but look at the place where it's leaking out and I don't I don't see it because I walked away to just let the cells do what they wanted and I had the camera going. But you can see I have a pretty big uh, leak right there 
and it's causing my epoxy to drain off. Now, it wasn't the end of the world. I did come down and throw a clamp on that spot, and that kind of saved it. But I, it, it did create a little different of a look because um, it looked like it was just running off of that side. And here the leak kind of slows down, but I went ahead and clamped it right here. And that stopped it. Now, crazy, but the cells are still growing, even though this is like, this is 20 times the speed, I believe, right now. They are still growing. And it was thick enough where it didn't burn through the bottom. So this is 24 hours later, and you can see the detail in the cells where we have the colors coming out of the cells. And it, and it actually was thick enough, even though I had a bad leak, like you can see the leak went out this way. But um, in spite of that, it, it actually turned out really nice. You can see the detail in these, in these cells. And then also when it leaked, it kind of created some character on this side. And, um, yeah, it was thick enough where it didn't go down to that last layer. But this is this is the example of if you can have your if you can create enough depth with your colors, the three in one oil won't go down to your um, to your base coat, and it'll create some deeper cells. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and um, check out our store. We have some cutting boards and some small things in the store um, at outlawwoodworking.bigcartel.com. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.